this evening with Radha and Jimena, who are our two fellows from Columbus, Ohio, in San Antonio, Texas. And today we are going to talk about the Ignite Fellowship. Um, I know that we just had a deadline that passed last Friday, but we have lots of other cities to recruit for. And the air conditioning just turned off where I am. <laughs> so you can hear me better. Um, and so what we are going to talk a lot about today, the fellowship and the young women are going to give you their experiences. Please ask lots of questions. Um, I will communicate through that beautiful little chat box down there. Um, we have a short slide deck that they will present on and then we will go through and then we'll um, get to all of your questions. So I will hand it over to Jimena who's gonna kick. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Jimena uh, and I'm the San Antonio Fellow for Ignite. Um, and so um, today we're gonna, this is our agenda. So, um, we're going to be welcoming, uh, you know, welcome, of course, we already did that. Uh, we're just going to talk about Ignite. So what is Ignite? Um, we're going to talk about the fellowship program and also the day in the life of a fellow. So what do we do um, day to day? Um, college chapters and college councils, which are a big part of this fellowship. And also uh, we're going to talk about supervision, support, relationships, um, a national headquarters. Um, also, we're going to be talking about application timeline and next steps since uh, um, the applications are due for each city are due in different times. Um, Q and A and also um, FQs. Um, so yeah, and if you have any questions, just like Sarah said, put it on the box. Um, so ignite. Uh, it's a it's building a movement movement of young women who are ready to own their political share of political power. So we're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, and we empower young women to be politically involved, but also run for office one well one day. Uh, it like you know it can be local, um, federal, or state um, office. And so uh, for me, I've been with Ignite since high school. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm about to graduate college. So I've been with Ignite for a while, and I've seen how um, young women just across, like, different ages, um, race, ethnicity have uh, come through the program. And, you know, they, they do want to run for office, and they want to be more politically uh, engaged so they can change just different things in their communities and just make a better um, you know, democracy or in cha or change the face of democracy, you know, in, in our current political world. Um, yeah. And so um, these are the uh, fellowship sites. So we are a national organization. And so right now we have um, 15. And um, so we have it all, all the way from like Seattle to San Antonio to Miami, uh, Fresno, uh, Socal, Denver, uh, Madison, Chicago, Columbus, New York, Boston. Um, and so we, we just have 15 right now. Um, uh, but in the future, of course, as Ignite expands, we're also expanding. Um, and so, um, I mean, it, it is great because you get to meet uh, all this amazing woman. And even though we all come from different, um, of course, cities around the United States, we're all really passionate about making a change in our communities and in um, our states and cities. So I think it's really great that as a fellow, you get to meet women from across the United States. And so the fellowship program, so, um, you know, we we get paid $10,000 and it's distributed um, over our time that we're fellows. And it's a one-year commitment and there's a possible, you can reapply after your one year um, if, you, if you feel like um, you want to do a second year. Um, there's also... So, you know, as once you uh, become a fellow, you're not just put in a CV and like, you have to figure out, you don't have to figure it out on your own. So we have our training um, in San Francisco. So um, our training is usually a week. And so just in this training, we uh, 
we just have different like we have training as to like what are college councils how do we um put together college council how do we make relationships with like, with our chapters so um you're not alone um in this journey you have other 15 girls and all the other girls have different experiences so it's really neat uh, for that one week we get to um get new ideas as to what um what we can do as a fellow and what works what doesn't and it's really neat because there's some two-year fellows that have been doing this for a year and so they can give us really good advice as to what works and what doesn't and also we have a regional mid-year retreat so that's when um for example for me it was all the south fellows got together and we just we had more training at this point so like you know this mid-year like you've been um as a fellow for you know many years so you get new training um so it, it was just a really fun experience um you know getting together just with like you know your regional fellows and talking about what was going good what was going bad what you need help on um and so we were we also have um we go to young woman run conference in washington dc and this is when all the fellows get together again. And uh, I think I'm really excited about this because, you know, the first week you meet all the fellows in San Francisco, you become like a little family and you just want to see each other again and be together in the same room and experience that same, um, you know, what you felt like, you know, empowerment and you were in a room full of amazing, you're in a room full of amazing women. So, you know, Young Woman Run is something that when we come together again and we uh, we just share our experience as fellows, as, you know, in what happened throughout the year. And so um, the day in the life of a fellow. So for me, I started as a, so I, I applied and then um, I was in San Antonio then. And so what, it just, Day is, this is a hard question because we do so much in a day. Um, so usually um, I have uh, meetings with my college chapters. So we have weekly meetings. And so I sit down with my presidents, uh, my chapter presidents, and we go over like, hey, what's what do you need help on? What What's going good? What's going bad? And then we just like have little celebrations of little things that are going good or we just plan what's going, what we're going to change to help them out or just to help the chapter out. And uh, also that, and also if, for example, if right now one of the girls is like, hey, I need this, like, we we are there to help them, um, just whatever they need uh, regarding Ignite. And also having those relationships with uh, your college executives and even, like, their members, like, there's some girls that are like, hey, I'm applying to this. Um, can you look at my essay? And you're like, okay, like let's let's just work through this together. Um, so also becoming a network for them. Um, and just staying in touch with your chapters. I think, uh, and also always, you know, you're always gonna be um, carrying it Ignite with you. So right now I'm an intern at the Texas Capitol and I'm always like repping Ignite because you know, like, it's part of who I am and like I'm a fellow. So always um, just talking about Ignite and and sometimes once you get like, once you have your college chapters, you know, you're gonna have weeks where you're gonna just plan. Every day you're gonna be like, okay, today I'm going to prepare the folders for the college chapter, for college council, I'm sorry. Or I'm going to send out emails uh, for the college um, council. And so I'm going to uh, email the the speakers. I'm, so it's just like there's a lot of planning that goes on behind it too. And, um, you know, it's sometimes it can get stressful. And it is going to be stressful. But, you know, it it's going to be worth it when you see all the amazing women that are go going to go to these trainings or or in the college chapter and they're enjoying it and they're learning and they're growing as leaders and they're cultivating those skills. 
And so um, I think that's what makes it all worth it. But um, I think you can't really, like, I think all the fellows have a different, you know, what they do daily. But, you know, some days are going to be crazier than others. Um, but, you know, j you just know that what you're doing, it's going to, it's for a greater good. And so, yeah, I don't know if Shara has something to add to this. Um, I would say that, yeah, just to echo everything Jimena said, I mean, no one day is the same. So I would say that, um, you know, just pretty much going with the flow and kind of ex uh, not really having, um, like, set expectations for what your schedule is going to look like. Um, and then that it's also a very beneficial thing because your schedule can be flexible. So as Jimena was saying, she works other jobs and being a student, um, it really helps to kind of, if you have a busy week with school or busy work with um, busy week with work, you can kind of rearrange your schedule, um, which is a really awesome um, component. But other than that, I think Jimena summed it up pretty well. Yeah. And so, okay, so building relationships is key. I think that's one of the most like important things um, that that as a fellow we do, it's building relationships and having meaningful relationships. So being present, you know, it's just more than than a phone call, or just be like, hey, like, or just reaching out to someone when you need something. It's about being there um, for your college leaders. So um, I think it's building relationships with the fellows, but also um, community um, and, the college chapters, it's, it's key because, you know, like I get so excited when I see like all the fellows, like even when we have calls like this, uh, because, you know, like we build a relationship that first week and we're each other like cheerleaders and we have like this group chat where like, you know, sometimes we put like, hey, I did this and everyone's like, oh, my God, like, you know, it's it's so amazing because you have that network um, of young women that are just there cheering you on. And it's great when you can be that um, that person, that cheerleader to someone else. And it's getting to know them because I feel like college chapters are really successful when you have a, a strong relationship with their leaders and their members. So when they know you, when they know you're present and they know and they trust that you're going to be helping them and that, of course, it's going to be ups and downs, but, you know, you're always going to be there for them. So, um, so yeah. And I don't know if Shrada has something to add here about relationship building. Um, yeah, so I would just say that uh, in terms of relationship building, again, just to echo what him and said, that's probably what I feel has been the most important part. And um, um, our fellows director, Tierra, always says this, that people will show up because of the relationship they have with you, not for what you're doing. It doesn't matter how amazing your program is. It's really about, like, the personal connection you make with them. Um, that's really the most important part. Um, so unless Jimena has anything to add, I can take yeah. it over here. Okay, so um, Jimena, you did great, by the way. Thank you. Uh, awesome too. Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> okay, so um, so going b more into kind of what the actual work, um, the fellowship kind of entails. So one of the most significant parts is um, kind of not only developing, but also sustaining college chapters um, in your community. So um, as fellows, we're kind of in charge of, as Jimena was saying, um, being that support system for your different college chapters and co uh, college leaders. So for example, um, we, like I have e-boards at different um, campuses that I am in constant communication with where we work to plan events like local events on their campuses as well as um, just different, they have panel discussions, we've done like get out the vote efforts um, and a bunch of other events. Um, and then, so for the most part as a fellow, your, um, I guess your goal for the chapters is to like identify those key leaders in your community and make them your um, leadership in each chapter. 
Um, and then moving along to college councils. Um, college councils are also a very significant part of the fellowship. Um, so virtually what the college councils um, are, it's a kind of a cultivation of all of your college chapters and other women in the community. Um, and you, we hold them quarterly. So it's anywhere between four to six times a year. And it's pretty much a great way to um, gather every woman in your community um, and kind of everyone gets to know each other, everyone gets to know you and everyone gets to know Ignite um, as a whole. And so in the, on these um, in these college councils, we have different trainings, workshops, we invite local elected officials um, to kind of network with and um, do like Q and A's and panels. Um, and then we also pretty much just uh, support their development um, of their college, of their individual college chapters. Um, so that's a huge part of the um, fellowship role. And then um, moving on to kind of what you should expect um, in terms of supervision or support from your fellows, as well as um, your the leadership at Ignite. Um, so like I mentioned, uh, Tiara, she's our fellows program director. Um, so she and well, and she and, and other staff are available um, for constant support. Um, so for the most part, uh, there are the point contact, but you also do have access to um, the rest of staff and fellows. So um, starting with supervision, um, during your transition period, you will be able to meet with um, the previous fellow from your, uh, from your city. So you'll get to kind of take over their chapters and they will coach you on how to work in that specific community um, and then you'll also be able to review any transition materials um, and then September starting you'll have your fellows training um, it's kind of a retreat where you kind of get a big boot camp of what Ignite is and then what your role as the fellowship is um, as Jimena mentioned earlier there's also the mid-year training which happens um, in about December or January depending on where what region you're from and that's a little bit more of an intensive training to kind of check in on your progress um, as a fellow and see how National can support you in any way and then more regular things, we have weekly check-ins with the fellows director, monthly check-ins with all of the fellows. So we all get to get together and kind of share and compare um, strategies that have been working in our different communities. And then we have monthly professional development webinars. Um, so that's also a great way to kind of uh, develop your own personal and professional um, side. And then we also do weekly and quarterly program reports where we're able to um, kind of track our statuses um, in, at different chapters and different um, programming. And then, of course, you have it, um, access to all of the Ignite materials. So we all share our materials for what, thing, what things go well at different cities. Um, we all um, share those. And then moving along to the relationship with the national headquarters. Um, so again, during the retreat in September, you'll be able to meet all of the staff um, in Ignite in California. And then in the first, in the, this first meeting, you'll kind of get to know what exactly the fellow does um, and how you will be supported throughout that process. Um, and then you'll also be able to get access to a lot of our training and tools and uh, materials. So for example, um, that's where you'll be trained on specific um, like presentation specific tools that we use. So like, for example, we use Canva, which is a great um, tool to for like marketing um, and creating different graphics and stuff and such. So um, that's that's the time where, you'll, where you will be able to um, get a hold on all of that. And then additionally, like I mentioned, the mid-year retreats and then the weekly and monthly check-ins, um, you will also be able to connect with the national side of Ignite throughout that. Um, and then moving along to the application timelines, um, th for April 5th, uh, the, the Atlanta and Columbus deadlines have passed, but if you are looking to apply for Birmingham, that deadline has been extended. And then on April 30th, that is the deadline for Central Valley and Chicago. And the following cities are, um, the deadline is May 15th. So Boston, Denver, Memphis, Madison, Miami, Minneapolis, New York, San Antonio, Seattle, and Southern California. So for- Can I make an amendment? Yeah. So um, folks, we um, actually are shifting our um, Tennessee site from Memphis to Nashville. So if there's any folks from Tennessee, um, we're moving Memphis to Nashville. Um, 
Thank you so much, Jimena and Shradha, for going through our slide deck. We're going to go through um, our Q&A. Um, and, and is the audio OK? I know that the air is on. Is it too crazy? OK. Fine. OK. So the first question, we have about 10 minutes for questions. So the first one is, how many hours a week do Ignite Fellows work? Um, and I'll, I'll put that to either of you, and then I can answer the rest of the question. Um, I I guess I can go. So um, we usually uh, we're not like required, but like fifteen to twenty. And you're like, oh my god, that is a lot of hours. But it goes by so fast. I'm telling you, sometimes you you just need more time because there's. It depends also on your city um, on what you're doing too. Because for example, San Antonio, we have four chapters, so we focus more on working with the chapters, but there's other cities that are still building the chapters. So they focus more on that. But uh, it's about, I mean, I, I say 15 to 20 hours a week. Yeah. Um, and then fellows are paid and our interns are not paid. <laughs> so that's the biggest difference between that. Um, you, We don't really recommend fellows to be interns at the same time. Um, we encourage folks, if you wanna intern for us, um, we'll take some spring interns now. So feel free to apply for that on our website so you can start to get a feel for us as an organization. Um, and that'll probably be the best way to learn about us um, before applying or I mean not before applying before um, a fellowship um, the next question that we have down here is just what the application process looks like Shradha do you want to take this question yeah so um, as far as the application process you can access the actual application on our website um, and then once you're on the application it's just a simple um, questionnaire I think there's four or five um, short answer question five answer question short answer questions um and then just some information about yourself and then after that you will go through first round interviews um and then i, I believe after that there's the second round interviews and then once that is completed the fellow will be selected for that city um i'll add one more thing to that we also ask for recommendations um um, second round interview, that's when we'll solicit recommendations. And usually we ask for folks that can kind of speak to the work that you would potentially do as a fellow. So we'd ask for someone who could comment on your leadership ability or your organizing ability. Um, okay, the next question is, um, I'm sorry, I'm going fast because I want to get to as many questions. Is how long is the training at the beginning and do you get paid? Um, the training is literally, how long are we together? A whole week? Mm -hmm. seven eight days it feels like a lifetime but also feels like it goes by so quick um but it's it's like six full days of training days <laughs> um and the the payment starts then and so you don't necessarily get paid for training but it is part of your fellowship payment um and then it says you don't have a chapter in your area um, what's the process for starting a chapter? If you don't have a fellow or if you don't have a staff member in your area, you should download the college toolkit um, and then and a self will get with you and we'll set up to go through what, what the first steps are and start a chapter. But if you are in one of our communities that we have a fellow in or an Ignite staff member, then um, um, but the first step in all that is downloading the college tool. Um, okay, the next question is qualifications. So we, if you're a freshman, um, ladies, what do you think about freshmen applying for the fellowship? Um, I would say I wouldn't necessarily discourage it, but I would say that it's a little bit um, kind of difficult because I know, at least in my experience, it's been really helpful. Your freshman year, you're kind of still getting to know, uh, depending on if you're from that area where your college is, you're kind of still getting to know your community and the programs that are offered in your community. So um, I'm not sure if I would necessarily put that on you as the fellow because it's just a lot to, I, I believe, handle. But I don't know if Jimena has anything else to say. I think, uh, I, you know, for I applied twice, so the first time I... I didn't get it, um, and I think that was like the best thing for me because I wasn't ready. Um, and then I applied the next year and I got it. And now that I look back at it, I think it was the best decision for me to just wait 
uh, because coming in, I was more ready and I knew uh, my community more. And so, uh, of course, like that first year, like work with the with the fellow, and then like next, like probably next year once you're more settled, because starting college is pretty hard. You know, you're just getting uh, accustomed to like a whole new routine. But I'm, you know, you, you, it's it's good to wait sometimes because you will be more ready uh, for yourself and for your community. Huh. Thank you, ladies. Um, there will be one fellowship opportunity in the state of New York, and that'll be based out of New York City in one of the five boroughs. Um, the next question is, can you apply for the fellowship without being a part of the chapter beforehand? Totally, um, but I will say that your application looks always greater when you have been engaged in our programming in some shape or form. Um, Fellows are paid $10,000 across the entire time that they work. And so that accounts to about $500 every other week. Is that right? Yeah. Exactly. I should know this. I'm submitting payroll after this conversation. So, yes, it's about $500 every two weeks. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, written letters or by email, phone. I'm presuming that is the recommendation, and that is an online form that we have that is similar to the fellowship application. Two recommendations, at least. <laughs> uh, how do you find out if there's a chapter on your college? You can go on our college chapter webpage on our ignitenational.org, and you can see our list there. OK. Contact person to meet in New York. You should check out our fellows webpage, but our fellow in New York, her name is Quadira Coles. So you should reach out to her. She just hosted a college council meeting, so I'm sad you missed it um, this past weekend, and it was amazing. Um, but reach out to her so that you can get to understand the work is. Answer the question about how fellows get paid. You basically get paid every other week and how much, $10,000. All right, did I miss any questions? Let's keep going. Ladies, did I miss any more questions? I don't, I don't think so. I think there might be one um, NG where it says, are oh, you which one is it? Um, how many people usually end up applying in New York? Mm -hmm. Over 20. NG, did I miss it? Oh, shoot. Where is it? Okay. Oh, I think I got it. It was a how many hours a week are you working on fellows, right? No. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you able to apply if there's not a fellow in your city? What happens oh. if it's a city close to you? Oh, I didn't see that one. Um, so we only have fellowship cities in the cities that we had on that map. Except, and then obviously shifting um, Memphis, uh, Memphis to Nashville. So I'll pull that thing back up again. Um, and so you have to be in the city. It's, you know, community organizing. So you've got to be there to do it. And then if there's a city that's close to you, um, I'm interested to understand how close <laughs> that said city is. And you do have to be... Um, very present. Shraddha and uh, Jimena can talk about how present they have to be with their chapters, um, but you you really need to be there for them. There's a lot of Shraddha, Shraddha has a very fun um, reimbursement form because she does a lot of driving in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> and then Veronica, you are welcome to be um, in Long Island if you need to be. Um, but you will need to commute to get to the five to the colleges we have in the five boroughs. Houston is actually not a fellowship city for us. The only fellowship city in in Texas is um, Jimena's site, which is San Antonio. And then Zara for LA, um, Southern California really is spread so very very far. <laughs> so um, that is. You know, we should take that conversation offline. Um, and I'm actually happy to connect you to Anais, who's our current um, our current fellow, so she can talk to you about that because it is um, it is a little bit like Shraddha in Columbus, um, but it's different because it's LA. <laughs> so it's a little. It, so I think you should actually reach out to her and have that conversation, or send me an email, and I'm happy to chat with you a little bit offline because I used to manage those colleges, and I can tell you all the freeways I drove on quite um, significantly. And then, um, ladies, let's actually close up with Veronica's um, 
Veronica's question for um, one tip that both of you, and hilariously enough, ladies, I just sent Jimena and Shradha their applications from last year. So let's close this webinar out. This is so fun, so great, with one tip that each of you have for these new candidates about how they can make their application um, super stellar and for us to get them to an interview. You want to start, Shradha? <laughs> <No. laughs> um, I can start. I can say that... Um... I would say, I guess, a big tip would to be um, highlight your community organizing, um, if you have that, or any type of activism. Um, that's been a huge, um, like, my past in activism and organizing has really helped me personally as a fellow and in this role. Um, so in the application, if you kind of talk about that, and then also just highlight, um, be genuine and talk about your actual, your passions and what you uh, care about, because I really think that'll shine through your application. I think, uh, I guess just show like your your love for the community and like what Ignite does because you know it's, you have to love what you do uh, in order to do this like really good. Um, and so just highlight that like, you know, um, you know, I think for my application, I put like how, how much um, I love being part of Ignite since high school. Or like, just be like, hey, like, this is what I do. Like, I think uh, women in politics or like in a place of uh, power or like, I need to have to need a seat at the table. So just highlight that in what you're doing um, to, you know, join this movement and just be yourself. Like, you know, just, just show us like through the application, uh, what, you know, what the future holds if you were a fellow. If you are, if you are going to become a fellow. Awesome. Ladies, thank you so much for sharing your um, evening slash afternoon with us. Um, I am at Sarah, no H, at IgniteNational.org. Jimena um, is Jimena, X-I-M-E-N-A, at IgniteNational.org. Shrad has S-H-R-A-D-A-H-A, at IgniteNational.org. Please reach out to us. Go to the fellows webpage. Reach out to any of those fellows that manage those regions. And we look forward to reading your applications and hopefully I'm um, getting to sit down with you for an interview sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Okay, I'm ending it. Bye, ladies. Thank you so much. You're fabulous. Bye. Thank you.